If you haven't gone on a dedicated photography trip, I'm going to explain in this episode why I think you should. But he's darker than him, and I'm the whitest of the lot, so you can call me Casper. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. And today you join me, I'm back at base, and I've just recently finished the last episode of my incredible trip to Scotland and the Isle of Skye. And I really enjoyed that entire trip, and I enjoyed also putting the videos together to share my memories and my photographs with you guys. And before I even begin, I'd like to extend a warm thank you to everybody who has watched all those episodes, given me comments, liked and shared. It really, really means a lot for me for your support. Now, today I wanted to do something which was to reflect back on why I think it's actually very important for you to take a dedicated photography trip. Now, most of my audience are photographers yourselves, so hopefully you'll get what I'm going to explain to you next and for the reasons why I think it's important that you should do the same. Now, the first reason that I would recommend it is that you actually can fast track your experience. You're getting involved in the environment and you're getting to use your camera a lot more in quicker succession than you normally would. So for me, if I go out taking photos, it might be once a month, it might be once every two weeks if I'm lucky. But when you're on a photography trip, you're using your camera many times, day in, day out. And what that actually does, it allows you to be able to finesse your use of the camera and also you start to see some fine tuning of compositions. And it can effectively fast track your learning by what might take you six months you could actually have done in a couple of days. And that's something I think that if you really want to be able to immerse yourself in the landscape and immerse yourself with the camera, you really will fast track your learning. Now, as I mentioned, because you're immersing yourself within the landscape, you actually can do it without distractions. So for me, if I'm going out to take some photos, I might have an afternoon or I might have an evening or I might have a morning. But when you're on a dedicated trip, you've got a morning, an afternoon, an evening. And if you're spending a couple of days, you've also got a night and the following morning and you repeat and you repeat and you repeat. The advantage there is that you're not under any time pressure and you also don't have any pressure from the time monsters that are always interfering and getting in the way of you relaxing and really getting into the landscape. Additionally, you can experience a landscape then in many different forms of light. If you wanted to go to one place and spend two or three days there, so be it, because that scene is going to change very regularly, as regularly as the light will change. And by doing this approach, you will really, really get involved with your photography. You'll fine tune it, like I said, from the first point, but moreover, without distractions, you can completely relax. For me, photography is about relaxation. It's about getting away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. And when I do that, and without having to know that I have to come back by a certain time, I can really enjoy the experience and get the most out of it. Now, another reason by going on a photography trip, and if you can do this, is go with others. Now, myself, Dermot and Patrick, we headed off to the Isle of Skye, and the advantage that I had there is that I could see compositions, but I could also see them seeing compositions. And I could also ask questions and I could learn from them and vice versa. Now, if you're going on a dedicated photography trip and you're going on a workshop, that I think is fantastic because not only can you learn from your guide, but you can also learn from the other participants. And I find that when you're out in the field with other people, they may have a different approach to you or they may see something or move the camera six inches to the left or six inches to the right and completely change that composition. You won't get that opportunity if you're on your own. And by going out with others, you can learn from their experiences and also the fresh experiences that you're both sharing in this new location that you're shooting. 
One of the best things about a dedicated photography trip is the memories that you create. And if you're doing that with other people, there's more fun that you can have. And it's not just the photography. Now, for me, we had many, many laughs on my most recent trip and any photography trip for that matter that I've gone on with other people. It's the fun that we have away from the camera that sticks with me a lot longer. And that's, I think, where you're sharing a common interest with people. Even if you go on a group and you've never been on a photography workshop before, most people may also be in the same boat. So you're all there to share the love of photography and break that ice through the common passion that you have. And I can guarantee you by the time your trip is over, you'll have made friends that you will keep contact with long after the photography trip is over. One other advantage as well is that when you get back, even if you're gone for a day or two days, you're excited. You're excited to get editing the shots that you may have captured along that trip. And that's where I find most of the fun comes from me because I can now immediately arrive back at base onto my computer, put all my images in. I normally organize them by day one, day two, day three, or even by locations that I may visit. And I can park them and I can sit back into them in a couple of weeks when I've got more relaxation time and I'll find a few nuggets that I wouldn't have if I was actually moving away from that area so quickly. And that's where I think that you can always go back over images as well from a later stage because your editing is always going to evolve. You are going to get better over time and you can also then re-edit the images. And when you're re-editing the images then from that period, I can guarantee you, you can remember what the weather was like. Was it warm? Was it cold? Was it windy? What you were feeling at the time, the people that you were there with, if you were there with people or if you were on your own, what you were also thinking at that time. And by having that body of images from that area, it is something that I always look back on in years to come. And I'm sure you can do the same also. So, like I said from the outset, my trip to Scotland was a phenomenal trip. And myself and Dermot actually recorded a very interesting podcast. We went through blow by blow, day by day, the things that we did, how we got there, what we experienced. And if you'd like to know more and learn more about that, have a listen to the Irish Photography Podcast that I've released recently with my ex-host, Dermot O'Donovan. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed my insights and the reasons why I think you should also go on a photography trip. Have you gone on dedicated photography trips? Please let me know in the comments below. So if it's your first time on my channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, when I'll see you back out in the field in the beautiful area of Ireland, Schlangefold.